Sealing the building envelope of a home during construction is not only extremely cost effective for the builder, but will also ensure true energy savings and higher levels of comfort for the homeowner. When air sealing, there are two processes to consider. Gaps between subfloor sheets, plasterboard wall, sealing finishes and the joints between these sheets, as well as components and penetrations into the building envelope that require sealing. While air sealing details can vary from home to home, one site built timber frame construction will have a lot in common with the next. Below you can see some of the more common areas for concern. Floors over a crawl space are best sealed while the subfloor is being laid. Typically adhesives in addition to nails or staples are used to attach the sheathing to the floor structure and this provides an excellent opportunity to seal the floor. For this to work, the bead of adhesive must be continuous without any gaps. It is also important to seal and insulate the external areas between two floors. When attic access covers are situated inside a living area, they need proper sealing. A good gasket or weather stripping in conjunction with a latch or a heavy cover material will help to keep the seal tight. Sealing the joint between the subfloor and the plaster or other interior wall coverings will save the framing crew an extra step. It also allows you to seal after the home is weather tight, so you can ensure a properly clean work area. Typically located within an internal wall, cavity sliding doors are installed during the framing stage, and in many cases they create an open air path to the ceiling space or external walls. You can either install weather strip at the top and sides of the cavity, or seal all gaps between the stud work and the header to resolve the issue. Sealing between a window or door jam and the house frame can be done using a backer rod with either caulking or expandable foam on top. Alternatively, after the plaster is installed, a seal can be created by caulking the architrave to the plaster. After framing, plumbers and electricians will begin their own rough-ins. It is not necessary to seal every hole drilled through the framing, however there are some that need to be addressed. Holes drilled through top and bottom plates, holes drilled through studs at junctions between internal and external walls. Due to the temperature differences flowing through the pipe, plumbing vents can expand and contract. Therefore, a flexible gasket is your best bet to seal the vent penetration. Run a bead of sealant around the hole in the top plate and gently press the gasket on top. Stables can be used to more firmly hold it in place. Drains through the floor can be sealed at the rough-in stage. However, drains through the wall should be sealed after the plaster is hung. A simple bead of caulking will do the job, though for excessive holes you may need to apply a gasket prior to caulking. Leakage through recessed fixtures is only a problem when they penetrate outside ceilings. There are three techniques used to reduce air leakage when this is the case. You can install surface mounted fixtures, leaving only a small cable entry to be sealed. Install a bulkhead below the insulated ceiling, which will stop leakage but require additional plaster and sealing. Or you can use downlight covers, which must be installed before sealing insulation with a bead of caulking. While it is important to seal as many air leakage sites as possible, you don't need to waste time or materials on areas that do not leak. Each situation will be different, but here are four common areas to avoid. Bottom plates of interior walls, penetrations in the first floor ceiling in a two-story house, penetrations in the first floor above a heated basement, penetrations through internal wall noggins. One of the only ways to measure the tightness of a building is the fan pressurization test. It only typically occurs when air sealing has been completed and acts as a final measured result for the home. A large fan and support bracket is temporarily installed in a door frame from which an operator can take a series of pressure airflow measurements. These will indicate the rate of air leakage in air changes per hour. Performing this test throughout construction can be prudent and will identify major air leaks quite easily. You can use a smoke producing device or even your hand to sense the airflow. This allows you to stay on top of the ceiling work as the job progresses. Thank <laughs> you.